I'd like to talk uh, for a minute about an issue that's getting more and more attention. That's the issue which scientifically is called stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, also called the chemtrail issue. Oh my God. Holy, there's one, two, oh my God. substance found by a southwest Arkansas man be part of a government test? Well, that's the question at the heart of a phenomenon called chemtrails, now getting widespread attention. Well, they say the government is dumping chemicals on us to control or manipulate the weather. And they say the unusual looking jet trails in the sky are actually chemical laden chemtrails. The survival of the human race literally is at stake. The physical survival the level of health that people will enjoy, the survival of the planet. If you're concerned about the environment, this is your issue. And yet most people have no idea that it's even going on. It is called geoengineering, fighting global warming by putting a chemical dust in the atmosphere and reflecting harmful radiation back into space. You could use barium oxide, for example, uh, which makes big fluffy clouds. You could use tiny little bits of aluminum, which is benign in the environment, and essentially manage the climate. That is not rain, that is not snow. Believe it or not, military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff. Small bits of aluminum, sometimes it's made of plastic or uh, even uh, telesized paper products, but it's used as an anti-radar issue, and obviously they're up there practicing. Now, they won't confirm that, but I was in the Marine Corps for many years, and I'll tell you right now, that's what it is. And tonight, one woman says the government's own data shows the chemicals are showing up in our drinking water. This is a multi-billion dollar, if not trillion dollar operation. It's also uh, very damaging, not only to the environment, but also to human health. Because being that it is illicit, if the truth got out to people, think about how damaging uh, could be to their agenda, both political and monetary. I, 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 had, a, I had a friend who recently, he, he's, he's, uh, he's always looking at, at, at things from a different perspective. He's a bit, he's a bit of a, uh, a conspiracy theorist, you know. Uh, you ever see that movie with Mel Gibson? Yeah. Conspiracy theory? Okay. He, sure. He's a lot like that. Um, and he says that whenever the president comes to L.A., there's no spring. It's just amazing to not, to try to look through somebody else's eyes. Like my eyes, I, I can see this so, it's like night and day. And other people just, it's just, the, 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 the illusion is just so deep. What do you think would happen if everybody awakened to, uh, to what was going on and what the plans were of geoengineers? I think, <laughs> I think they'd have a revolution in Hawaii. If people really understood what was going on. What's your concern for, I know that, that you love the land here. What do you, what's your concern about the camp trails? Well, that, that we won't be able to live here and grow our own food. And that we'll, uh, our health is going to be compromised. Uh, it already has been. Yes. And the, the thing is that they're doing it every day here, every day. So it's hammering, 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 micro doses every day. And then, of course, it's getting in the environment. And of course, it's weakening the plants. And it takes a couple years for this to actually weaken the plant. So we need, we are asking for GMO taro. We're asking for GMO papaya because we can't grow our natural seeds. We can't be sustainable. We can't truly, you know, be here as God created us to be. Ten megatons of aluminum dumped into the, the uh, atmosphere would have no human health impact. So, so let me be more careful here. We're to separate out the toxicological, but so the aluminum we've only begun to research and polish now. There was.
those mason jars and they were brand new, sterilized, and that's what we catch the rain in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a HEPA filter that we tested the air with. Okay, so you caught rain and then you, you basically filtered air. What did you find? Aluminum and barium. We haven't done anything serious on aluminum, and so there could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow we have more. But this is virtually exactly what the geoengineers describe and, and did describe in the conference, as you know, mm -hmm. as the result of spraying aerosols, a, a, a white haze that would eliminate our blue skies. It's exactly what we see, so it's, it's baffling to many of us how people can uh, not give this issue the serious attention that it deserves when it's, it's virtually everything the scientific community is describing as something they urgently want to do, mm -hmm. but they still don't admit they are doing. So this is being done mm -hmm. over, our, over our farms and over our things. So basically they want to eliminate our ability to eat organic food, clean food, have clean water. So it, in some ways it, it sounds to me like, and you know, again, it's just a projection, but it sounds to me like this is control. How do we control the masses? What shows you can make very high quality and do this in just a jet in a very simple way, make high quality alumina particles just by spraying alumina vapor out with oxidizes. So it's certainly in principle possible to do that. There's a big literature that's already looked at that. Aerosol geoengineering looks like it is so cheap that the cost is basically not going to be an issue. That means that implementation decisions will be risk to risk decisions. The risk of doing it against the risk of not doing it. And it makes the problem of how we govern it fundamentally harder and different than novel. So I've told you this cheap to deliver materials and stratosphere, and I'm convinced that's true. I don't think that will change. But I think the more we do research, the less easy this will look, the more complicated the environmental effects will look. And that's a good thing, because right now it looks too easy. So I think that if we do more research, we're likely to find out that it's harder and more complicated than we thought and that the side effects are harder to manage. And that's a healthy outcome that will make it easier to do the management. It's an empirical question how people will actually react to knowledge about this. Another reaction is to say, if these crazy scientists are so concerned about putting CO2 in the atmosphere, they want to think about these things. And that might actually mean we should be more serious about the risks of CO2 in the atmosphere. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. When I have a friend who builds organic gardens, and across the industry, they're seeing a decline in anything natural and organic that's growing. However, the effective crops have the aluminum-resistant seeds that have been manufactured. So part of the genetically modified uh, crops includes a conscious effort to make those seeds and those crops resistant to aluminum. Is that what you're saying? Well, this is not an accident. No, it's not. So those people know what's going on. Absolutely. Yes, they do. Not only do they know what's going on, but they intend to benefit from it. They already are. They've been. That's why we have to get this information out there. We can't let another decade go by without anyone doing anything. Ah. And I don't see how anybody who's got their eyes open and their mind open can come to any other conclusion but that somebody is spending a lot of money and effort to spray the planet. I know that whenever it's finally discovered, and it will be, the people who are doing it will undoubtedly say, oh, well, we, do it. we did it for you folks. It's for the greater good of the greater number. It's for the society. It's probably to prevent global warming. But in my humble opinion, it's not in your good or mine at all. I don't know what it is, but we'll soon find out. Paul and I are very excited to announce our new co-producer, the world-renowned G. Edward Griffin. Not only does he bring years of experience in issues like this, but also credibility from his countless numbers of works. We're very excited to have uh, his involvement with Reality Zone, which will give us avenues to distribute this out to millions of people. It's long past time to make this issue known to the public. There have been many videos made, there have been many statements made, a lot of, a lot of websites put on the internet exposing the truth about this issue, but none of them have really put it all together. And it's past time for that to happen. That's the reason I'm very, very happy to become associated with these young men that have taken it upon themselves to produce this documentary to be called What in the World Are They Spraying? It's a perfect title, and I think they have the expertise to do it right, 
They have the knowledge, they have the right outlook, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. They can't do it alone, and I can't do it alone with them. We need your help. We've got to get it out. We've got to get it out fast. Funding will be necessary for this project. It's already half done, but the rest of it needs to be done, and it needs to be done quickly. So when you see that little website come across the screen in a moment, or perhaps now, that's the place to go if you want to become a part of this project yourself and really help to make a difference in the world. We need your help. Thank you.